Hey gang, are you a business to business marketer? If so, your needs are unique. B2B buying cycles are long. Your customers face incredibly complex decisions. Isn't it time you had a marketing platform built specifically for you? LinkedIn ads empower marketers with solutions for you and your customers. LinkedIn ads allow you to build the right relationships, drive results, and reach your customers in a respectful environment. On LinkedIn, you're going to have direct access to and build relationships with decision makers. Of the 875 million users on the network, 180 million are senior-level executives, 10 million are C-level executives. You'll also be able to drive results with targeting and measurement tools built specifically for B2B, and they work. Audiences exposed to brand messages on LinkedIn are six times more likely to convert. LinkedIn Ads is also ranked number one for security, community, and ad experience as part of Business Insider's Digital Trust Study. Folks, for me... LinkedIn is the number one place I go when I want to reach decision makers. You should too. Make B2B marketing everything it can be and get a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash MPN. Terms and conditions apply. On this episode of Winfluence. Ask the question to the leadership and your stakeholders what their perception of marketing is because you need to understand what you're working with. It's very hard to change people's minds or beliefs if you don't first know what they are. So that's the first piece of the puzzle. There's a difference between being an influencer and actually influencing. I'm Jason Falls, and in this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate that difference. Welcome to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. We can talk about influence marketing or even influencers, or for that matter, just social media marketing all day, and it still doesn't mean the C-level folks in your business are going to understand it and approve of what we want to do. Some of us talk to the C-level. Some of us are at the C-level in our organizations. But the hard truth of the matter for marketers, even the CMO, is that those of us in the weeds of building marketing strategies and executions are seldom understood or even trusted by the CEO, the COO, the CFO, and other executives in charge. That makes it harder to do our job. So we need to market internally to the C-suite, and that means we have to market ourselves. Stacey Danheiser knows all about marketing internally to the C-suite. She's the author of the books Standout Marketing and Valueology. She's also the CEO of Shake Marketing, which works with C-suite executives at B2B brands to help them understand marketing and growth. She took some time to sit down with me recently to talk about what the C-suite's perception of influence and influence marketing was, how we can better market ourselves to them, and what the future may hold for us and our work. Some executive level smarts coming up from Stacy on the show today. And if you want to present some executive level smarts to your organization, I certainly recommend looking at Scipio.ai and community commerce marketing. Scipio is our presenting sponsor. I love what they're doing so much. I joined the company as executive vice president for marketing in November. Scipio.ai is a community commerce marketing platform. It has a family of applications that helps you drive commerce through your own community. One of those taps into a big theme for 2023 for brands and creators, and that's efficiency. Whether you're a brand or creator, you probably spend a lot of time writing and rewriting captions for social media content. You also have to make sure that content will perform well by keeping up with the trends across social media. Our gift to you this holiday season is a solution called VibeCheck. Think of it as an AI content generator with an extra brain for optimizing social media posts and predicting success. Tell VibeCheck your idea of your post or even campaign. Give it a call to action, the tone of voice you prefer, and the length of the word count you need. With the push of a button, you have a library of smart content recommendations with predictive analysis of how that post will perform. VibeCheck's powerful generative AI engine digs into the big data of over 140 million social media users, posts, images, and videos. It mines that data for deep learning insights to give you not just content, but content that will perform. That makes it very different from other AI content generators out there. Now, you know I'm not a fan of automating content creation. It takes the humanity out of it. But the generative AI that Scipio.ai produces in VibeCheck 
is really impressive, but that's actually not the point. You still need to review and edit, make sure it's perfect. Vibe Check gets you 90% of the way there, which saves you time. Scipio.ai wants to give you that power and time as a holiday gift. Sign up for a two-week free trial, no credit card required. Go to jasonfalls.co slash vibecheck, V-I-B-E-C-H-E-C-K, jasonfalls.co slash vibecheck, and start creating all the captions and content you need with the click of a button. It's free for two weeks. Just see if you like it. I'm betting you will jasonfalls.co slash vibecheck. Seriously, folks, this is going to change the game for you. If you write a lot of content or have a lot of clients you need to write content for, it's just going to make it faster, more efficient, and I think you'll really love the predictive nature of the recommendations. jasonfalls.co slash vibecheck. How to market yourself internally to get better buy-in from the C-suite. Stacey Danheiser is coming up. She's next on Winfluence. Hey gang, are you a business to business marketer? If so, your needs are unique. B2B buying cycles are long. Your customers face incredibly complex decisions. Isn't it time you had a marketing platform built specifically for you? LinkedIn ads empower marketers with solutions for you and your customers. LinkedIn ads allow you to build the right relationships, drive results, and reach your customers in a respectful environment. On LinkedIn, you're going to have direct access to and build relationships with decision makers. Of the 875 million users on the network, 180 million are senior-level executives, 10 million are C-level executives. You'll also be able to drive results with targeting and measurement tools built specifically for B2B, and they work. Audiences exposed to brand messages on LinkedIn are six times more likely to convert. LinkedIn Ads is also ranked number one for security, community, and ad experience as part of Business Insider's Digital Trust Study. Folks, for me... LinkedIn is the number one place I go when I want to reach decision makers. You should too. Make B2B marketing everything it can be and get a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash MPN. Terms and conditions apply. Stacey, you spent a good deal of time on the brand side as a marketer, but also advising brands and CMO types. I, I want to get to the influence marketing stuff in a bit, but I'm curious what your take is on the complexity of marketing today versus perhaps 10, 15 years ago. How much harder is it to lead a marketing organization in 2022, 2023 than it was when you were maybe coming up on the brand side of things? Yes. Yeah, that's a great question. So, I mean, I've seen a lot evolve over the past. I started in consumer marketing and then I switched over to B2B marketing. And when I first graduated and got a job in marketing, my role was really aligned with a business priority. And my title was acquisition marketing. So it was not related to a tactic. It was do whatever you need to do, use whatever tactic available and acquire new customers. And then the jobs that I got after that were retention marketing. So I kind of got to see both sides of, you know, acquisition and retention, cross-sell, upsell, sort of all that stuff. What ended up happening, I think, as tech came on the scene, all of a sudden marketers had to become specialists in understanding how to use the tactic and how to use the tech. And that has now become, I guess, we've come full circle back, right, because CEOs are complaining and heads of marketing are complaining that the marketers that have now grown up in that environment don't understand business. They may understand the tech, but they don't understand why they're doing certain things and how that relates to business priorities. So, you know, that's the biggest challenge I think today is that you have a whole sort of group of marketers who may be really, really smart and understand the tactics, you know, and how to use specific tactics, but they don't necessarily understand how it fits, that puzzle piece fits into the broader puzzle. Yeah, I get that resonates with me. I also think though, and maybe I think there's, there might be two problems at play here because I also think that you've got you know, you can focus on advertising as a marketing choice, or there's demand gen and content marketing or lead gen and site optimization, which leads to SEO. Then there's PR and social and influencers. Mm -hmm. Almost all of those things existed in, you know, 2005. It gets much less complex prior to the dot-com bust. So like the 1990s, 
But I also think a lot of marketing's problem today is even though people are skilled at the tactical stuff, it's like paralysis of choice. Like which channels do we use? Which tactics are the best? Does that resonate with you as well? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think I just saw, you know, the updated marketing tech landscape as an example. I mean, that whole diagram kind of watching that thing evolve over the years is just insane. Yeah. And at some point, and that, that is, you know, I can't remember what the psychological principle is called, but, you know, going into overwhelm of choice where eventually we just want, you know, just narrow it down A or B, yeah. you know, somebody do the work for me to narrow it down. And I, I think we're experiencing kind of that decision fatigue mm-hmm. and being able to select the right things. Yeah. So let's zero in on influence marketing here since that, is what these fine people came to hear about. The practice and segment of the options out there for marketers is still very young, and that means the C-suite in many organizations either isn't familiar with it or doesn't trust it. I would ask if that's a fair assessment. What do the C-level folks you talk to think about influence marketing, or I guess I should say influencer marketing, since I'm guessing they haven't heard my definition, which is a little different, but what's the C-suite's take on it? What have you heard? Yeah. I mean, I think there's some, there was another stat that I saw that said, you know, 13% of CEO sort of, what is your take on influencer marketing? I kind of start with what is your take on marketing in general? Because I got to understand what perceptions we're working with here. And a lot of times, depending on the industry, you'll hear things like marketing equals events. They're event planners and they go, they help us with trade shows or they help us put together events or marketing equals social media or marketing equals collateral. In the financial services industry, you know, where you have to get all these quarterly financial documents sent every quarter, the marketing team is responsible for that. So in their heads, you know, that marketing equals putting all that stuff together. And so, you know, that's, I think we are working on it. And I think, you know, I spent a good deal of time educating CEOs and chief revenue officers and chief financial officers on what does good marketing look like and how should marketing be helping your business. So I guess my follow-up question to that, which, you know, if the influencer piece of it is a very small slice of a bigger puzzle that CEOs need to get their head wrapped around, and I'm glad you shared that percentage, 13% of CEOs come from a marketing background, which means, folks, 87% don't. And so that's part of the problem. Mm -hmm. But my follow-up question was going to be, so for the influence marketing practitioner out there listening, either on the brand side or the agency side, you know, that obviously presents the challenge of buy-in, but if it's marketing in general has the challenge of buy-in, then okay. influencer marketers are just a sliver of that. How would you advise someone who is chomping at the bit to unleash marketing smarts, not just influencer marketing smarts? You know, they're really you know anxious to go at it, but they can't get that internal support. What's their path to finding it? Yeah. So there's really three different things that I typically advise. So the first one I I already mentioned, ask the question to the leadership and your stakeholders, what their perception of marketing is, because you need to understand what you're working with. It's very hard to change people's minds or beliefs if you don't first know what they are. So that's the first piece of the puzzle. The second is to spend time understanding the business and understanding what your stakeholders care about. So for example, you know, everybody says, oh, it's all about revenue. Well, that's one sort of take, of course, but there are 10 or 15 other things that the C-suite is contemplating and thinking about. And in order to effectively market yourself and market your plans to those individuals, you need to know what they're, what they care about. And so um, these are questions like, how does our business make money? Which customer segments are the most profitable? Which geographies are the most profitable? Where are we struggling and having the biggest issues? What's the sales team having success with right now? And where are they struggling? Because if you can find a problem and find one of those big challenges to then position your influencer marketing or any campaign or any event or really any marketing tactic or program that you want to run against, then you're more likely to get that sold, right? Because value is in the eye of the beholder. And we need to understand sort of what the other side cares about and values so that we can position our, our programs effectively. And then the third thing, just real quick, is knowing what customers need and want and how they make decisions. So, you know, this is a really big missed opportunity, I think, happening in a lot of companies. There's a huge disconnect 80 plus percent of CEOs believe that the, the chief marketing officer and the marketing function can be more influential, but they have very low confidence 
that this mm. is happening. I mean, under it's like 30% believe that they actually are playing into that role. And one of the, the number one reasons why is they are not representing the voice of the customer internally. So imagine you're sitting around an entire group of people, and this happened to me multiple times working at five different Fortune 500 companies, and you have very loud and vocal people sometimes in those meetings and planning sessions. And you know the strategy of, hey, whoever's the loudest wins, it doesn't always work. And so one way that I found to get around that is to have a pulse on customers. And that means that you're doing like at minimum doing customer research once a year. And that typically, you know, we would hire an outside agency to do research for us. We would purchase third-party research reports, you know, just to like that marketing would own, that we would actually budget for this and that marketing would have access to that information. But on top of that, I would spend time with the sales team and travel with the sales team to understand and hear firsthand what are customers saying that they want or need where are customers finding out about us? You know, where are they spending their time? How are they getting educated? And basically when you arm yourself with that information, it now becomes not an opinion of one, hey, this is my opinion and I think we should do influencer marketing. No, it becomes, hey, I want to show you some data that our customers are interacting with these particular people or these particular companies. And this makes sense for us to align with them. And here's why. And so now all of a sudden, it's not an opinion. You're really proving that out with the customer lens in mind. Yeah. It it all comes down to, I think, communicating business value for whether it's marketing overall or whether it's influencer marketing or even SEO or whatever it is you're doing. If you can deliver that business value explanation, which, you know, points to what you said, I have a quick example for the influencer marketing folks out there who are interested and it doesn't have anything to do with revenue either. I happened to have a project not too long ago and there was a complexity in the product that the C-suite at that brand were having trouble figuring out how do we explain this in a way to the consumer that will make sense and is simple, you know, and kind of explaining really complex things in a simple way is, is hard to do. And it just so happened that we were working with a creator. I didn't intentionally go out looking for someone who created explanation videos well, but we were working with a creator who did explanation videos. And I sort of challenged him to take this one particular product and this one particular feature of that product and explain it in a way that would be simple for people to understand. Well, when he came back with the video for everybody to watch, like the client just did cartwheels. They're like, we've been trying to figure out how to explain this for three or four years and we haven't been able to do it. So again, it's finding the right creator to solve the problem that illustrates the business value. You solved something. It didn't have anything to do with driving revenue, but Mm -hmm. it certainly was a blockade in the way of driving revenue that made everybody happy. It's a great example. We're talking to Stacey Danheiser about getting corporate and client buy-in for influence marketing efforts. When we come back, I'm going to dig into something Stacey does to help marketing pros like you better prepare and position yourselves to maybe one day be in that CMO role where the decisions are yours. Stay tuned. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Jonathan Gaby hosts a great podcast called Marketing Distilled. He's the master distiller. Jonathan, tell us what these fine folks are going to get out of listening. On Marketing Distilled, you'll hear from industry experts and me to learn about more marketing things and taking those complex things and distill them down into actionable strategies or tactics. Amazing. Where can people subscribe? You can find the show at marketingpodcast.net or search for Marketing Distilled wherever you get your podcast. You heard him. Go subscribe. Back with Stacey Danheiser. Her B2B consulting firm is called Shake Marketing, but she is also the mastermind behind the Confident Marketer Playbook. She's helping us earn buy-in for our influence marketing efforts within our organizations and our clients' organizations. Stacey, let's talk a little bit about the Confident Marketer Playbook. I'm not a huge fan of the online course world personally, though I have taken a few of them in my time and that some of them have you know, a really good place, but you've actually built something pretty unique. I think tell folks what the confident marketer playbook is and who it's for. Yes. Well, it is specifically designed for B2B marketers aspiring to be in a leadership position, or maybe they're already in a leadership position and want to gain more skills or up-level the team around them. 
and it is an eight week program. And I'm with you on the online courses. I've personally purchased, I mean, probably a hundred and you know, the finish rate is very low. And so what I wanted to do was recognize that model doesn't necessarily work for everybody. And so this eight week program is live. It's so we do a live training every single week. And then we also do a group coaching call every single week for marketers to get real input and feedback on their plans, on what they're struggling with. And really at the end of this, equip them and empower them to have the tools to be more confident and earn more credibility when interacting with their stakeholders and their peers, and as well as just reduce the overwhelm and the random acts of marketing that (laughs) seem to be going on a lot right now, because I'm very anti random acts of marketing and pro doing less better and getting very focused. We should not be, you know, running around with our hair on fire every single day of of our lives. And so wait a minute, wait a minute. You're not describing (laughs) anything other than marketing. I mean, that's that's every marketing organization I've ever been around is hair on fire constantly. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. And so, you know, so that's what I do. I work with we either do it in a group cohort for the company, if there's, you know, a team of eight to ten people, or you can be put into a cohort with a group of peers from other other companies. And so we go through, you know, step by step, starting with really the how to become a confident marketer. What does that even mean? And what are the skill sets and the competencies and the mindset required to kind of step into those shoes? And really, my goal for this is to get more marketers sort of out of that order taking position and more into the driver's seat. And so, so anyways, it starts with that. And then we go through sort of all the elements that are required to build a marketing strategy and to get, you know, C-suite leadership buy-in, get your sales team buy-in and build a real solid execution plan that can, that will excite you and that can be executed without staying up till midnight working every single night. So (laughs) (laughs) that's pretty valuable. So in your experiences of working with the cohorts that you have over the course of the last few years, what are the top maybe three or four skills or perhaps experiences that marketing professionals in that sort of B2B, I want to, I'm aspiring to leadership, but I'm sort of in middle management. What do they lack that might put them in the position to be a marketing leader one day? Where do you see people needing the most work? Yeah, that's a great question. I think number one is really customer understanding because I think a lot of marketers you know, depending on the size of the organization, and I work with companies that are scaling up, they want to grow fast. I don't really work with startups a lot, but I work with kind of scale ups and then fortune 500. So I have kind of both sides of that equation. But as you, you would declare, basically, when you go get your first job in marketing, you're kind of declaring an industry that you're going to become known in and or become an expert in. And it's really hard to change industries later because people want to hire marketers, especially that understand the industry. There's a huge learning curve just to go into any industry. And what is what I see happening a lot right now is that there's a lot of junior level folks that are put into, you know, content marketing roles, thought leadership roles, influencer marketing roles, but they don't really understand the industry that they're operating in. And therefore they don't understand the customer problems. And it's very difficult to be seen as a strategic partner if you don't have that knowledge and that background. Now, you know, of course, a lot of that comes with experience. So it's just time and and working in a particular industry. But also there's strategic kind of shortcuts that you can make to get that knowledge quicker by really, one, demonstrating curiosity and recognizing that you're in control of your learning plan, that nobody's going to come and tell you, hey, here's the specific books you need to read to get into our industry. And here's the associations to join. And here's the people to talk to. And here's, you know, how to get a crash course. You really have to take ownership of that. And so I think that's not, that's the number one gap I see is that just a lot of people are not taking ownership of learning the industry, learning the customers and learning the products that they sell. And so if you just even spend time on that one thing, yeah. your perception of the value that you're adding will go up because you'll understand what people are talking about in the in these conversations and in the decision-making room. Yeah. I'm glad you said understanding the customer better, 
because I think in, and I've been at several agencies, a couple of brands over the course of my career, and I think almost at every stop, and I don't think anybody would argue this with me because it's true, we make decisions based on assumptions about 95% of the time and data about 5% of the time. Mm -hmm. And it should be the other way around. Your assumptions are never really going to work out the way you hope they do, unless you're just lucky. And some people get lucky and some people have good instincts. That's fine. But if you if you have the data to back up the decision, it's a heck of a lot more sound decision. And mm -hmm. so I'm always fascinated with marketers who don't pay attention to the customer more specifically. I'm also always amazed at how distracted, perfectly smart, effective, savvy marketers can be. And perhaps this goes back to the complexity conversation of what marketing has become. But when you're thinking strategically, everything in my mind should be focused on the business goals, the marketing goals, objectives. Yet even seasoned marketing professionals today will invest time and resources into initiatives that either don't or can't ladder up to the overall goal. I wonder if this is ADHD coming to bear on the field. Is it shiny new object syndrome? Why do we get fascinated with things like, and I'll use an example, engaging with a specific mega influencer who the person loves versus finding what I like to refer to as a more right creator that can actually drive conversions and brand value in a more meaningful way. What's wrong with us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think shiny object syndrome is definitely real. You know, what I like to advise is that step one, have a plan. And this is, I've, I've been doing some research. I have a, a scorecard that I created called the Confident Marketer Scorecard. And we can share that or you can Google it. Sure. But it basically, one of the questions was around, do you have a marketing plan? Do you actually have a marketing strategy and a plan? And most people say, we kind of have a half-baked plan. So I like to start there. You know, Do we have a plan? And I would always advise, like, let's bake 80% of the plan and let's leave like 20% unbaked. 20% really is the experiments. And so in that example that you just gave, you know, how I would reposition that would be, let's do a small experiment or a small pilot project. How are we going to gauge whether or not this is working? What are the time parameters that we want to have this in place? How much money do we want to really spend on this? And in, instead of going kind of full blown until we know it's been a proven tactic to work, we start with doing an experiment. And that sort of helps shiny object syndrome a little bit because you can still say yes to ideas, especially when they're coming from your CEO or other key stakeholders in your business, but that you don't have to necessarily throw your entire plan out the window to accommodate that. So I think that's a really big one to kind of move yourself out of that order taking mode is to say, do we all know what the objectives are? You know, why are we doing this? And is there a potential better solution to this problem other than this idea that somebody had in the middle of the night to go <laughs> spin up a brand new partnership or go, hey, let's go start a podcast or let's go do whatever. <laughs> so yeah. I love it. I love it when the non marketer executives come to the table with, we should be doing this because I heard a podcast that said we should. I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. wow, that's great insights. Yes. <laughs> Stacy, this has been a really useful chat. Thank you for your insights today. Where can the fine people out there find you if they're interested in connecting or learning more about the course, your work, your books, and so on? Yes. Well, my website is shakemktg.com. Please connect with me on LinkedIn, Stacey Danheiser. I'm pretty active there and would love to connect with you. And then the Confident Marketer Scorecard, I mentioned, is a free tool that you can Google or maybe we can drop a link on the show notes. Absolutely. People. We will put links to all that in the show notes. Great conversation, Stacey. Thank you so much again. I feel a lot smarter. <laughs> Thank you. Great tips and insights there from Stacy. Jump over to our show notes to find links to all her resources out there. You can find them at jasonfalls.co slash Stacey Danheiser. That's S-T-A-C-E-Y-D-A-N-H-E-I-S-E-R. jasonfalls.co slash Stacey Danheiser. If you don't remember how to spell her name, just go to jasonfalls.com, click on articles and find this episode. Also, don't forget to completely change the way you produce social media content for the better. Get Vibe Check from Scipio.ai. A two-week free trial, no credit card required, awaits you at jasonfalls.co slash vibecheck. 
And to help us create a bigger and better vibe here on the show, tell someone who might want to know more about influence marketing about this podcast, send them to winfluencepod.com or share a link to this episode on your favorite social network. If you have a moment, drop Winfluence a rating or review on your podcast app of choice. We are on all of them. You can also help make a future episode of Influence Awesome. Ask your question about influence or influence marketing that you want my answer to or take on. Send an email to jason at jasonfalls.com. If you're feeling adventurous, record a voice memo on your phone and email me that file. I'll let you ask the question right here on the show using the recording. Winfluence is a production of Falls and Partners. It's presented by Scipio.ai. The technical production is by MPN Studios. Winfluence airs along MPN, the marketing podcast network. Thanks for listening, folks. Let's talk again soon on Winfluence. Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast, is an audio companion to my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my periodic newsletter or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. And if you need help with your influence marketing strategy, drop me a line at jason at jasonfalls.com. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Nick Westergaard hosts a great podcast called On Brand. Nick, tell us what these fine folks will get out of listening. On Brand features my conversations with smart marketers and agency professionals, as well as those working for innovative brands like Adobe, Ben & Jerry's, MasterCard, Salesforce, and more. Tune in and you'll learn how to tell stronger stories and build better brands. Amazing. Where can people subscribe. You can go to onbrandpodcast.com, find the show at marketingpodcast.net, or search for On Brand with Nick Westergaard wherever you get your podcasts. That's two A's in Westergaard. You heard him. Go subscribe. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.